Ahoy and well met. Joy, gentle friends. Joy and fresh days of love accompany your hearts. <laughs> we are back for board games, talking again about games that you play on the board where I alone, as a bastion of virtue and justice, stand stalwart against the gatekeeping elitists that are my three companions. I mean, three <laughs> Euro gaming companions. I stand in defense of theme, dice rolling, and fun. That is what I stand in defense of. For the record, my game today is not a Euro game. This is, no one believes that, Angela. <laughs> no I believe it when we see it. No mine, mine is a Euro game with a theme, so very, very Oh, I don't believe that for a second. <laughs> Look at the, the, this is this is the equivalent of the enemy trying to smuggle in in a disguise. They've got like those glasses with the nose and the mustache on, like trying to infiltrate. No, this is were we not nodding on? Were we not <laughs> amazed? Yeah, exactly. There was actually a so They're disguised on one of the board, five crossbows. On one of the board game channels, there was a video where it was like top ten thematic games, and someone did legitimately argue some Euro games like Power Grid and stuff like that as being thematically which honestly power grid's just about math but look look boom let's talk about games no, <laughs> let's uh who wants to who who is who is not gone first sarah did you go first last time yeah oh G gregory you're I'm going not. first. okay boom. all right guy? i'm ready oh boy all right it's time to show the biggest box in the universe look at oh, this gosh. I have not played this one. <laughs> <laughs> so this is Emperor's, Empire's Age of Discovery. This used to be the Age of Empires board game, but then they it. lost the um, whatever. Oh, the rights. The rights, yeah. yeah. Uh, so they reprinted it as whatever, like a generic Age of Empires thing. But it's a worker placement game um, about colonizing the new world. So... We've got a map. Let me see here. It's a very big map. It is Whoa. a big map. Ugh. I'm trying to decide if I've read the rule book for this game. Because there was a game that looked like this game. that I was supposed to play, but I never got to. I love that you're unsure of which rule books you have and have not read, <laughs> Angela. Before yeah, book so I many. read about two rule books a week. <laughs> yeah, that's impressive. So this is a worker placement game where you colonize the new world. Here we've got the new world. Um, I'm going to put this down because it's very, like, large. Um, but, yes, so you can be different countries. Here is Spain. Uh, there are six countries, just like Britain, France. What? Britain. All Britain. Yeah. Do you get to pick? You Yes. Yep. Britain. Boom. There are different special powers. Britain uh, has the power of the Dutch East India Trading Company. That's what it has. <laughs> <laughs> you would well, the, the Netherlands have the West Indian Trading Company, which lets you take a merchant ship before anyone else can. So, what? Yes. Are there uh, Corsairs? No Corsairs. Opium? Uh, uh, nope. <laughs> uh, but yeah. So, uh, this game's interesting because you put your workers like on the side of the board. So, you like are indicating what you're doing. And then you don't do it until like the end where everyone places their things in order. Um, so you can colonize, you can get trade goods. And then trade goods are like, you try to get as many of a certain kind for as many points as possible. And it gives you more money. Uh, it's kind of like monopolizing the trade goods. Um, doesn't, doesn't Scythe do that where you put the like, you say what you're going to do and then it all goes into effect at the same time? I've only played Scythe once. I have I've only played it once, yeah. Uh, that doesn't sound like what we're saying in Scythe, but there is simultaneous action in lots of board games. Yeah. Look at um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> like There's different types of workers. So every round you get like five regular workers, but you can get uh, like special workers. So there's the priest who converts people in the new world to- Yes, Alan, I feel like this is made for you. you yes, you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> this is literally a flintlock fantasy game because you've got Jesuit. soldiers who can like kill people. Um, um, obs. Yep. And uh, we've got traders which give you money or help you get merchant ships, captains who have large telescopes. Um, and uh, is there another one? Oh, builders let you get buildings for cheaper. This was originally like an expansion, but it's all kind of one thing now. 
Um, but yeah, the buildings are good. They give effects over time. Um, there's eight rounds. It's kind of like Lords of Waterdeep um, because there's eight rounds and three ages. And you get points at the end of every age, depending on how much you've colonized. Uh, you get points for like a lot of things. It's kind of like other Euro games, but it has a theme. So it's more fun. Uh, and yes. I'm, I'm actually playing Lords of Waterdeep next week. For the really? first time. Mm -hmm. For the first time. Christmas. Yeah, my brother gave it to me at Christmas, but again, we've been playing Gloomhaven, and that's all we've had been able to play. So, but one of them can't be there, so mm -hmm. we're playing a different game with, you know, subbing a couple people in. So we're gonna play Lords of Waterdeep. Is that mm -hmm. your first worker placement like that, or have you played like Champions of Midgard or something? No, it'll be. I guess it'll be my first worker placement ish. Yeah, I guess my first worker placement thing. I haven't actually played that one, but I hear it's very similar to Champions of Midgard, which has a theme and it has dice that you roll, which we really should talk about that one because you roll dice Definitely and you fight me. monsters. Yeah, how do you win, Gregory? Oh, most points wins. Uh, <laughs> Would you call those victory points? V victory points, yes. It is kind of like a point salad thing at the end. You get points victory for trade points. goods, buildings. Uh, For those who don't know the inside jokes of our group chat, Alan <laughs> sent us all in a video to watch. <laughs> There's a video by ProZD about yeah. Ameritrash versus Eurogamers. And the Eurogamer one is, keeps saying, victory points. <laughs> we need to get a monocle. Yeah. <laughs> Whenever I explain a game to new people, I always, like, my first sentence is always, okay, so the person with the most points is going to win, just, like, to start the game. Yes. You have to say, victory points. <laughs> I'll do that with your most on. distinguished accent. Well, it's kind of like the first rule in setting up a board game is almost always put the board in the middle of the table. <laughs> yes. <laughs> No. Gregory, so what do you like? What do you like about that game so much? So it's got different workers, which is very cool. Um, most worker placement games, the workers just do the same thing. Uh, but this, you kind of are like, okay, well, I've got these two types of workers, like special workers. So do I want to like colonize with my soldier so I can like disincentivize people from coming here, or do I want to like get more people with the the missionaries? Colonize uh, with the Jesuits. The Jesuits, yes. <laughs> Um, yeah. Open or, a school. Exactly. Yep. Convert people. Um, then the buildings are always interesting. They make the game feel different because there's just a ton of building tiles. Uh, this is like a third of them. Um, and there's like five every age. So it keeps it interesting. Um, and yeah. It just um, it just feels different every time. Uh, also, when teaching this game, I used to always say uh, wars are very rare in this game because you can like do a battle, which is just like fighting one person in one colony, or you can do a war with someone, which is fighting that person in every colony that yes. you are both in. <laughs> That's what uh, you do. <laughs> and whenever I say that, everyone tries to go to war with me at some point, <laughs> even though it like doesn't make sense to you sometimes. So I, I can't say that anymore. It doesn't matter. The bellicose nation of Great Britain. Yep. You should definitely see if this is on like Battle Arena or whatever the board <laughs> game thing is, so that we can see if this is the Euro game that wins Alan over. <laughs> how um how how competitive is it? Like what? How does the like how does it like is? Are you just kind of like doing your own thing? Do you run into each other a lot? Like are there a lot of people like blocking your strategy, or is it um more like the one that is it the is it the Viking one that you were talking about where you're kind of like doing your own thing? Um the, yeah, like Asgard or whatever. Um, yeah, Feast of Odin or Champion yeah, of Guard yeah. or one of the, yeah. Um, it's, you're you're kind of doing your own thing. You're co competing for like the worker spots, uh, the buildings and stuff. Um, and like going first in the next round can be important. There's spaces for that. Uh, you'll find that out in Lords of Waterdeep too, Alan, because there's like the castle piece in that, which lets you go first the next round. And sometimes um, like the, the good spaces are really, in high demand, and that's that's where the competition is. There's sometimes battles and stuff, but sometimes, um, a, a lot of times, actually, there's not really battles, because if I send my soldiers over, uh, a lot of times people don't try to battle because my soldiers are already there. So um, it's kind of like tough, um, but how yeah. Do, how do fights take place, dice? No dice, no dice, no. If, if you, 
you have to put a work Shit. around the battle space and you get to kill one person for every soldier you have in that area. It's auto kill? Yeah. It's like uh I, I was gonna say it's like risk, but it's not it's not like risk. It's it's like risk if like you each kill each one of each other every time, basically. <laughs> so there's no like there's no underdog, the tiny nation staging a miracle, like a miracle siege <laughs> and like fends off the encroaching oppressors. There is not. Fends no dice. Britain. Yeah. Fends off Alan as Britain. <laughs> um, no dice? No dice. Why? Why do the Europeans hate dice? <laughs> I don't understand. I mean, why do we love dice so much? That's really culturally, really interesting. Why we love dice so much. Chance. We love chance. chance. But we why? Believe, why did that happen? Because we believe in scrappy underdogs. That's why. I don't think that's actually true. I think that's it part of the me. brainwashing propaganda things. Oh, it is for me. It is for me. Like, dice allow you, dice allow you, even, even the, like, you know, predicted victor to lose. Have you it, played Quacks of Quedlingburg? Do you think I've played a game called Quacks with Kevin Nerd? Here's the thing. It's a push your luck game. It's literally a game where you have stuff in a bag and you literally could stop at any point and make sure you get both points and money. But you could always get better and you can always trigger your pot to explode because you're a potion maker. And it's it's literally a push your luck game where you win if you don't explode, but you always want to. You're like, I know I still have this thing in here. And yeah. yes. There's like a four out of five chance that I screw myself over, but that one out of five. No, see, that's that's too rich for my blood. I'm I just need the dice to roll because <laughs> like the dice is the great equalizer. It brings down kings and raises up paupers. Okay. Do, do the dice have to explode? Of Midgard has dice. Yes. We roll 27 <laughs> dice to see what phase we're in to roll 27 more dice. Add all up the numbers, subtract the, subtract the next 35 dice from the roll, and that's your attack score. Yes. <laughs> I don't know if any of my favorite games have dice. I'm going to be real. I don't. Who are you? Who are you? Angela. Do you know who rolled dice? Do you know who rolled dice? Kelsier. Kelsier rolled dice. Do you think? Okay, you and Did I he, don't even agree on Kelsier as a character. He rolled dice, and you know what? He rolled boxcars. Yes. Okay, you've not read Hero of Ages yet. You know what? That is, that is irrelevant to, to <laughs> me talking about the final empire. I'm just saying you've read Well of Ascension. You now have a little more context for why I don't think he rolled the dice appropriately. He did roll the dice appropriately. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, I think everyone else just, like, was smart. The choice is binary. If not him, then who? Nobody. It's him or nothing. Binary choice. And for all those who haven't read Mistborn, go watch the World Hoppers video. It exists somewhere. <laughs> I, I stand Kelsier. All right. <laughs> All right. That's a cool game, Greg. I tried to find it on the freaking, like, actually, you had me sold until you told me yet there was no dice. And then yes. I was sad again. Should have kept that under wraps. Okay, Champions of Midgard has dice. It's a, it's, a, it's a worker placement. I think that one will, although you have a thing against Vikings for some reason. I don't know why the Age of Discovery thing isn't on Amazon. Where do I get it? Uh, oh, so many precious Alan. Eagle, Griffin, whatever. Let me see. Empire. You have a Griffin game. Let's see it. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. I'm there. Not everything's on Amazon. Yeah. Amazon, it, well, Amazon's not a great place to buy board games from. I think I said that in a yeah. previous video. Yeah, that's, so. that is true. I, um, I mean, it's okay for the obscure games like this one. I think if they sold a copy of this, it would be legit. But if you're trying to get Seven Wonders, don't do that. Or Patchwork. Or Angela, what, yeah. game you, what game you brought for us? Fox in the Forest. It is not oh. a board oh. game. Oh. What that it is? is a card game. That's a a trick-taking card game. So, no dice. But That's fine. I like hearts. Very beautiful artwork. So this is like the artwork on the cards. Is it like hearts? Um, I mean, in that, that it's a trick taking game, but I would compare it more to a game with Trump, yeah. like Spades or Bridge. Um, I like Spades. Yep, yeah, I love Spades. Spades is great. Um, as a kid, we played Hearts and Spades. My family played Bridge, but I was never like old enough to understand the bidding of Bridge. If you've yeah. never heard of Bridge or seen old people play it, there's a very intense first round of bidding, and then the card game part is easy. I know how to like shed suits and you know um, bleed other people's suits and all that. Those are bleed all tricks. Dry. Yeah. Yeah. That's I've what you're supposed to do. Me but neither. this is a game um, that's a two-player trick-taking game, which are very, very rare. 
Um, normally you need like four people. Sometimes you can pare things down to three, but it's always awkward. And this is a true competitive two-player trick-taking game in that you still play 13 tricks. So the average trick-taking game is 13 tricks because 52 divided by four is 13, etc. cetera. It has three suits and all of the odd number cards have the pretty art and have special powers, which what makes it kind of interesting. You can change Trump, you can add or remove cards from your hand, you can make it so someone has to play their highest card in a suit. And what's interesting about this game is you never want to take all the tricks. You want to take exactly seven to nine tricks to get maximum points, or you want to take zero to three tricks to get maximum points. If at any point you take 10 to 13, you get zero points, nothing. And somewhere in the middle, you get the, so it's like, nice. you want, you, you, there's that balance there. So you don't want to let your opponent take too few, but you also, if you're going for the strategy of, I want to take tricks, my hand is good enough to take tricks. Cause if you play trick taking games, you kind of know when your hand is just too powerful to throw off the whole time. And I love it because as a trick-taking person, I just love playing this game. I think last weekend, my best friend was over and my two roommates were watching something on TV and we just kept playing the trick-taking game because that's what's great about trick-taking games. You just can do yeah. it and it's legit and like- Over and <laughs> you over. Can, you can stop whenever you want. Like you can say, okay, we'll play till someone gets 17 points or you can play till someone gets 35 points. And it's small. I love the art. I love shuffling cards. Um, I think I just think it's so pretty, and I love card games. Yeah, you have more art too. Have you played it yet, Greg? Yeah, I've played this a ton. This is this was my go-to for a while. Well, like when one of my friends would get here, and we're waiting for like my other friends for other board games, we would just pull this out because yeah, like you said, very quick, very fast, not tough to teach at all. Um, I mean, it's tough yeah. to teach trick-taking games to people who are not used to them. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. Because you just automatically have an advantage because there are just certain like meta strategies you learn as you mm -hmm. play trick taking games growing up. Yes, <laughs> my parents know. played Euchre all the time. Um, like my mom and one of my sisters against my dad and my other sister. I have never really been into that, into card games, but I watch them play a lot. So I can play trick taking games. And then we bought, I'm sure you know what this is, Angela, the space one last the crew. year. For Chris so yes, cool. the crew. But my husband hates it because he has never played trick taking games. So every time we're all like, Andrew, why did you throw that away? Oh, and he's like, I hate this game. <laughs> it's so rough playing the crew with like three people who can play trick taking games and one person who's like, no, you can't, don't play that card. It's and you're not, supposed to, you're not supposed to talk. So you're just like, mm. <laughs> that's like alan talking about uh seven wonders last time he was yeah like, yeah if you're to the left of someone who doesn't know they give you that person all the cards that, uh, but seriously i mean yeah. there are certain meta strategies you learn that you have an advantage over people who uh, don't understand we played when i was in high school every single time there was a sub or a free day we played one of two games we played hearts which is where I learned. Yeah, where Hearts I, is a great one. Played so much Hearts. And then we played friggin' Egyptian Rat Screw. Oh, yeah. that game. I play against my students all the time, and I have a 100% victory rate. Because <laughs> when I start to lose, I go into full autism trance. Like, I, I am like, the world disappears. And now I have a tunnel that is, that is focused only on this pile of cards for when there's going to be something that I can slap. And all of a sudden they're like, what the crap Walker? Da, 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 da. Like, no, I cannot be defeated once, once I enter the power state. And Probably so for the best, cause you shouldn't be slapping your students' hands. I will slap their, their hands if they put their, <laughs> try to put their grubby hands before, before that I can grab that double. Put your hands down. And then try to add all these other rules. It's like, no, 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 no. Quit adding, like, you don't slap on every, like, oh, you got, we got sandwiches and we got, like. The, the, the sandwiches the, are real. Yeah. Not, they were not real when that. I played Egyptian rat screw. You, you, you are playing updated Egyptian rat. Remember, I was in high school in the, in the late 90s, 96 through 2000. Oh, and it's so, not my fault you're old. No, it's not. <laughs> but it's, it's also, it, like, I don't care. It's my classroom. My kids are going to play. We're going to play our way. I play with sandwiches now anyway, but I had to like be weaned upon sandwiches because I didn't understand them. And so I had to like make sure I really understood it before I play because I can't break my win streak. And so it's been like a year since I've played with any kids and I'm loath to do so because I don't want to break my streak and I don't want them walking around being like, oh, we're the ones that took Walker down. <laughs> I'm, they would. I am, I am the Titanic. 
It's a bad analogy because that was not a good analogy. Not great. No. Um, <laughs> I'm also going to just briefly back to the two player trick taking thing. If you're also looking for another one, I have Claim, which is um, a second trick taking game I like, and it has also very cute art. Like it has this has five suits. And there's like knights and goblins, and it's fantasy themed. And- I just put Fox in the Forest up in my uh, my yeah. my cart here, so I can. But- this one's also fun. It has different powers for different suits, so different ways you can get points, so different strategies. Like the dwarves, um, you want to get the least amount of dwarves tricks, but they have really high numbers or something like that because, you know, they're beefy. I don't know. I think Fox in the Forest is more streamlined, which when you play a trick-taking game, that's typically the experience you want, I think. But this is still kind of fun. And um, I need to find the American versions because this is the UK one that I shipped over because the American one. It's like books. Yeah. Sometimes you have <laughs> You get different editions. I, am, I need to get yeah. this for my parents for Christmas. I am always fun. looking for because, like, right, like I'm just I'm so much busier than I used to be, and it's so annoying. So when people come over to play like games, if we're not playing Gloomhaven, I most of my games are so long and they're so mm-hmm. complex. Like they take like thirty minutes plus to set up, and then you know two hours plus to play most of my games. And I just that because when I got all of them we just all had so much more time. Like we would come over, they would come over on a Saturday morning and we would just play because we D&D'd every other Saturday. And on the off Saturdays, we played board games and that's what we did. And so, you know, but now it's just like they come over after work and we've got like, you know, maybe a couple hours or whatever. And I, I'm always looking for more of these quick to set up, quick to play games because I don't have a ton of them. They end up playing um, uh, code names um, or... Uh, Seven Wonders, which is, you know, short as we talked about. Um, mm-hmm. Smash Up pushes it just because everyone takes forever to play their dang cards. Uh, I mean, Smash- if, you, if your friends like trick-taking games, the crew is a fantastic I one. Don't know what my, I don't know what my friends like if they like trick-taking <laughs> games. We don't have any. We how, don't about you, how about you talk to your friends? Come back. Figure that out. They're the crew gonna, is really fun. They're going to say and what? It's also cr- quick because you can just do a mission. Yeah. The crew? The, the crew, crew, yeah. Planet Nine? Yeah. What about Mission Deep Sea? No, it's the expansion. You probably want just the base game. All right. It's popular enough that it's almost, it's only been like a year and it already has like. Is it the Colonel Speer des Jahres winner? Yes. Okay. But they, they, you should probably pronounce that in German because that's. It's I did. The Spiel des Jahres or something. That's what I said. Colonel Spiel des Jahres. I actually don't know how to spell it. I just hear board game YouTubers say it enough. Yes. <laughs> They're probably saying it wrong, but. <laughs> All right. I know there's the Kenner Spiel, which is the family weight game, which actually isn't that the one it won? The Kenner Spiel. Yeah, that's what I just said. Yeah, totally. That's exactly what you said. It is, I said. I said it, but I said it in German. You said okay. Kenner Spiel. That's Listen, not. I can't not even German. say Spanish words correctly, and I'm Venezuelan, okay? I... Venice, are you Venezuelan, really? Yeah, I'm Venezuelan. I'm half Venezuelan. I'm, I'm one of those, you know, mixed children of the American Revolution. You know? Have you been to Caracas? Yeah, because that's like where you fly in, but my family's in Maracaibo. Nice. That's super cool. I did not know that. That's awesome. I have never been to South America. I'm you trying probably to won't go to Venezuela anytime soon. Yeah, if you don't not. have an embassy there. Flights don't go there. I'm probably not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, I added the crew to my list. Sorry, I had to do that. Um, Sayra. Sayra. My dad said. <laughs> Just like Feyre. Oh, oh no. Undo, 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 undo. <laughs> That's how my dad pronounces Sarah. Sarah. <laughs> my uh, my sister's name is Catherine, and my other sister pronounces it Catherine. She says, Catherine. Catherine. <laughs> Um, right i also have a card game today i thought that this was gonna be the day i get kicked out for having like a less intense game with everybody else's like really intense games but then angela showed up with the trick taking game so i'm feeling better now <laughs> mine's so, also I, a card game yes which Three i love card games. <laughs> so seven wonders would have been on my list as well but i picked i'm going to pick different things so we don't duplicate any of them so the game that i picked today is dixit so i just took out my little oh, expansion here oh that's the expansion okay yes i have the box Yes, so I have the box in the closet. I just took out the expansion so I could show some card game or some cards, some of the artwork because it's really pretty. So Dixit is a, I think it's French. I think it's a French card game. And it's kind of one of those abstract European games where you're working with language and pictures. Never, never and... picks mine. <laughs> I never pick mine. Ever. 
It's one of those party games that's highbrow. It's like a highbrow party game. It is what it is, is Alan ends up with one card while everyone else has all the points like at the end of the night. No one ever picks mine. I'm like, that describes it perfectly. How could you not choose that one? Alan, first of all, don't make a Dixit part of your Jeopardy game. Don't even attempt to do that, but it is a lot like your other Jeopardy category. So being an excellent, I've I've been feeling like you need more pictures in, in Bookish Jeopardy. So I think this is something you need to introduce like fantasy weapons or something. You know, it's um, happening this weekend. So no, <laughs> not this weekend, a couple. <laughs> so you get dealt, I don't remember if it's like six, it's some number of these cards and they all have this really pretty, but like very strange, oh, it's upside down, strange, like Crazy. abstract art on them. So you're given a bunch and you know, there's say there's four of us playing. So whoever's turn it is, you have to pick one of your cards and you have to give a clue and it can be a single word clue or it can be a sentence. It has to be something that you feel describes what the card is trying to portray. And the catch is that you want the most possible people to guess it without everybody guessing it. So if everybody guesses that your card is correct, you don't get any points. If nobody guesses that your card is correct, you don't get any points. So you're looking to appeal to like most people in the group. And so once you... (laughs) But he gets out. Once you give your clue, then everybody else chooses a card from their hand that they feel like fits that clue too. You put them in the middle, you shuffle them up, you flip them over, and then everybody else votes on which one they think is yours. And obviously, if they pick another person's card, then that person gets points, etc. So it's just like Angela said, it's kind of like a highbrow party game, but the artwork is really pretty. It's I, f- I find it's like a good game to play when people are not in the mood for a two and a half hour board game. You can still talk and do other things while you play it, but it's really fun. Nobody ever wants to play with me. Everybody in my family and friend group hates Dixit. So I'll play it on my birthday. I don't know. Why do they hate it? I I think they're not, I don't hang out with a lot of abstract thinkers. I don't think I have a lot of very concrete family members and friends. So when they come up with clues, they also are like, this is the perfect clue. What is wrong with everybody? And it's difficult to like. Uh, um, this is... Have you guys played Dixit, uh, Angela yes. slash Greg? I, I haven't played it, but I've played games like it. And I understand that I just replace what other game with these pictures, you know, like the idea yeah. of like, I have played Mysterium, which is very close to yeah. it. It is, yeah. Yeah. Except in Mysterium, you have like the one person who's giving you yeah. the, the clues. It's more involved. It's less streamlined. Freaking, this happens in Apples to Apples too. No one ever picks mine because they're not clever. They're like, they're like, oh, this is funny. I'm like, that doesn't even fit the theme. It doesn't even fit the theme. Mine You're is not reading perfect. the room. You have to read the judge. Mine is perfect. How do you, what do you mean you don't know who Winston Churchill is? Why are you it gets worse with Cards Against Humanity, too. I don't play Cards Against Humanity. If cards Against Humanity, everyone tries to be gross. And I don't like, I just don't. I mean, like, that's fine. I don't like playing it. I've passed the point where, yeah. I will, you know how last time we were talking about you are past the point where you want to play Monopoly? I'm yeah. past the point where I want to play yeah. Cards Against Humanity. My, my students Same. bring it when we go to like out of town, like to state convention. And I saw them playing it the first time. I'm like, guys. Y'all ain't playing this game on a school trip. Y'all can play, but you're going to hand me your hand. You're going to hand me your hand of cards, and I'm going to remove anything that is absolutely inappropriate for a school trip, and then you can keep playing. So they're like, what? And your I'm stack like, is this big. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm like, that's your choice, guys. Like, either put it away, because I'm your chaperone, or you play the truncated deck. Make your choice. <laughs> this is just reminding me, though, that I should get myself a copy of Dix- Dixit, because... um when I am with my friends for like holiday parties or whatever we do get to reunite, I have some friends who love board games, like the friend I had over last weekend that I played Fox in the Forest with. And I have friends who are like, they'll try out almost anything like Sushi Go, which I know we haven't really talked about, you know, like simple games. And I have friends who like hate board games unless they are like these very casual, low energy level things. And I think that could be a fun one, especially since that person is an art major. And I think yeah, this is happen. like nice. this is like one of those book two videos where you talk about transitioning from YA to adult <laughs> fantasy. This is your transition from casual card game to. I mean, I don't mind game. playing some party games. I'm just very particular, like because yeah. sometimes I don't mind. Like Code Names is fun. I have another one called Just One, but like typically I like the more strategic thinking games, which Look. a party game is more about popular opinion. Which Alan has said today, popular opinion is horrible. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a liberator, they call me. Um, I, uh, I I don't love code names. Like the people I play games with like code names way more than I do. Um, I don't. 
it's fine. I mean, it's fine. But again, I'm just like, like I am not playing around. I, I will not give a clue less than three. I'm not going to do it. Like, I'm not going to oh, that's do so it. fun. It's, that's it's great. Gonna, I want you on my team. It's going to be three or four. I ain't giving you no two or heavens for Fen. Um, <laughs> horse one. one. No. For those who don't know, <laughs> we haven't given much context, but this is a very popular mass market game now called Code Names. There's a board of words, usually four by four. And your goal is you have a, someone who knows where all of your spies are. Like, there's just certain words you need to get your team to guess. And you can only give them a clue of one word and you can tell them how many things in your section relate to it. But there's um, a card that will instantly disrupt the board. So you don't want them to guess that. And you don't want to guess the other team's words too. And it's deceptively very hard. It's best with six people or more because yeah. the chaos factor yeah, is I fantastic. Agree. I agree. So Emmy's it's fine. It's just, it's just not, it's just not my favorite. Greg, what is yeah. your Dixit experience? Uh, it's fine. I'm actually kind of similar to you, Alan, in that, I'm not good at the game. <laughs> People, I actually, you don't understand our brilliance, Greg. Yeah, yeah. Everyone else <laughs> misunderstood is bad, genius, and I'm just so good that I just don't get points. That makes sense. Yes, um, but yeah, I, I don't love it. It's it's fine once in a while, um, but uh, you should yeah. come join my friends, Greg. Join I my should. friend group. Yes, <laughs> yes. I will avoid being with Sarah on her birthday, <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> I'll play virtually with you, Sarah, if you find a way. Thank We're you. December girls. We we can play mm -hmm. games together. Look, Thank you, I, Angela. I'll play anything. It's just I don't ever win. I'm just like, and I, I, anyway, it, it's fine because it just feeds my narrative that I am a, that I am the misunderstood uh, representative of the you know the the oppressed populace. So <laughs> I just I just pump it into the machine, crank out pamphlets. Yep. Every time I lose, I. I, I <laughs> It doesn't make me as mad as apples to apples. Apples to apples makes me so angry. It's yes, like, I agree there. It's, apples to apples has overstayed its, uh, it's enjoyment welcome. level for me. It makes me, yeah. so, it makes me I, so angry. I think I finally got rid of all of our copies of apples to apples. We never owned our cards multiple copies. Humanity. I don't know what happened, guys. Things just acquire. Like we once just had the expansion, but not the base game. Why did I'm you like, get rid of it though? Of you huh? why, why did you get rid of it? Well, I don't think, I think my mom sold it at a garage sale. I think we just finally decided we don't play them. Oh. And so we didn't throw it out. I, I find it really hard to throw out board games. When I moved, I found, um, and it was during the pandemic too. So it was really hard to like give things away and used stuff. I found a boys and girls club here in Boston who would take some of my board games. So maybe they're not played. Maybe they're all, you know, in pieces now. But in yeah. theory, some children get to play those games. <laughs> so Literally thought you said the poison girls club. <laughs> No, boys and girls, you know, like how in some cities, you know, they have some. I have one here in Pennsylvania. I just miss her. <laughs> well, like we didn't have those in my town growing up. So when I moved to Boston and these were in every suburb, I'm like, oh, this is kind of a nice thing that your taxes pay for. This yeah. is reasonable. The so. Boys and Girls Club. That's a Florida only club? Yeah, I think that's why you get all the Florida men. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Alan, I once won a board game in a hula hooping contest. And guess which board game it was? Code names. Apples to no. apples. Monopoly. <laughs> yes. Star which, Wars Monopoly. I was going to say which version Way of better. Monopoly. Mm -hmm. I would have thrown it in their face. <laughs> <laughs> which version of life do you guys like? I'm partial to Monsters, Inc. life. I, I only have regular. Only have Literally didn't know there was a... But speaking... Hold on. Let's talk about life for a second. Life... <laughs> The current copies of Life are trash. That wheel doesn't spin for crap. And when I was playing Life, that wheel would go all day. Now it goes, that's it. Have y'all played? Do you know what I'm talking about? We do have the new copy. I understand what you're describing. I don't own a current copy of Life. Get a Life. You need to understand, Angela. The spinning sucks in life now. Okay. It sucks. I mean, you hear that Hasbro life is like top tier children propaganda. My my hatred against Hasbro I, is it Hasbro? I don't know, but there's the game that I absolutely hate is Mousetrap, and my kids no, want to play no, it all the time. The time. Stop your hair. I hate it. I what? setting it up, and then you always try to do it, and it never goes all the way no, through, and just... then. Oh, it's 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 awful. And then it like one works. kid will like just shove bad. the other kid under the mousetrap every time. And then there's like Sarah. a huge fight. It's oh, Sarah. it is the bane of my existence. No, 
I will Vinci, not walk back on this da one. Da Vinci sets up my mousetrap, <laughs> and it works perfectly. The man <laughs> jumps in the so jumps cool. in the bowl, drink, da, 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 traps him. Perfect. That's one of the few children's games that I'm excited to play with. I them. love. Then come that. here and play it with my kids because I, every time I they ask me, like, death would be kinder. I love mousetrap. I love mousetrap. Um, Listen, and Sarah, for the record, I just watched Come From Away. I want to go to Newfoundland so bad. I'm seeing I'm seeing Come From Away in December, I think. Cool. If you don't I've like never, it, don't tell me. I've I just don't want to know. Okay. Well, I will well now I'll definitely like PM you. A <laughs> blast. <laughs> um speaking of life, the the lowest paying salary job in life that no one ever wants because it puts you behind in the game is teacher. <laughs> no, life is a horrible game I'm in terms of like throw that little goals. tidbit out there. <laughs> when you draw your profession, you're always like, "Oh, teacher." <laughs> you start with so much debt. <laughs> your salary sucks. <laughs> it's so crappy. Anyway. Did you want this to say anything more about dicks at Sarah? No, I'm good. <laughs> this I'm game I, now. <laughs> This game I'm about to talk about is probably my most played game after Arkham. It was our go-to for a while just because we got tired of setting up really complicated games. And, and the, because the game changes really every time, um, we've, we have many spreadsheets where we've been tallying our games and combinations. It is Smersher, Smash Up. So Smash Up is, um, if you don't know what Smash Up is, there are... Um, a bunch of different factions. I think the original one comes with eight factions or something like that, maybe 12. Um, there are different factions, like I'm looking right now, Shapeshifters, Killer Plants, Astronites, which is Star Wars, um, Star Roamers, which is Star Trek, Alien, Bear Cavalry, Changer Bots, AKA Transformers, Cyborg Apes, Dinosaurs, Dragons, etc. cetera. Um, and you each get two decks. Every person gets two decks of cards and you shuffle them together and that's the smashing up. So say I got um, alien, uh, alien grannies and I am alien grannies and that's the narrative done. And so the object is to um, earn victory points. But uh, each, so you play, it, the rules are really simple. This is why I, uh, we play it a lot, especially with new people, because the rules are really simple, even though the strategy is complicated. The, and the strategy changes based on the two decks that you have. If they have terrible synergy, rip. Bad rip. If you get ghosts and wizards, rip. Sucks to be you because ghosts' power is they are stronger the fewer cards you have in your hand, and yet wizards are card draw. That's what they are. So you've literally neutralized the, the two powers. But, so do you do um, yours randomly, Alan, or do you choose always, which faction? Always, always. Because, so initially, the, the rules say you can pick. The rules say um, people get to pick and you go, no, 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 we don't do that. Because if you let people choose, everyone will choose zombies and robots. Yeah. Zombie, zombie robots are the single most powerful combination in the game. Mm -hmm. They are both base game factions. My friend like got, got got zombie robots randomly once he won in three turns done one game's over three turns because they are so strong and they work so well together because the zombie lord can bring everything back out of your discard pile and the robots just play tons and tons and tons of minions it was ridiculous so we always random and what you get is what you get and no complaining play your best so the way it works is you're trying to break these bases you get two actions and that's why it's um easy to understand. I it love is, the ponies. Yeah. Oh, they're really good. My yeah. little pony's good. Mm -hmm. So you can play an action and play a minion on your turn. That's it. Everything else that is more complex than that is based on your faction. Some factions let you play more actions. Some factions make you let you play more minions. You can destroy minions. You can move minions. You can attach actions to bases that give you plus one power. And so each of the minions has a, um, has a power uh number on their uh why can't i draw a bloody minion the games are there we go each minion has a power number in the top corner there if you'll see and that's how much that they are how much power they lend to the base and so you're trying to at the end of your turn if the total power on the base every player's characters on the base equals or is greater than this number the base breaks and whoever has the most amount of power gets that first number second second number third third number and so you're trying to this is just a lot of strategy especially when you get four players because like do you, you don't want to play too much where the base is going to break without you you know like 
you you start it and then they break it before you can even add more power to it. So you literally get Ava. Nobody cares. It is not even your kind of your dinner time. Um, what? She's not home. She's out of town. The heartbreak. And she wants she wants Christina, but Christina's not here. She's out of town. Um, and so you mess me up, Ava. Cat. So you you don't want people to break the base without you being able to like at least lobby for second place. And it is it is a pretty even game. Every now and then I, the game gets run away with where there's like two people in a four person game. Really, it's just it's going to be one of them vying for it. But usually it's pretty even where it could be anybody's game for several rounds. Um, and so, yeah, I like it because, I mean, the strategy does change based on, you know, based on uh, which factions you get. And there's there were I have for a while I got every expansion on release day and then I don't have like the last four four or five because it's been a hot minute since i've collected them and it's been a hot minute since i played this actually but when my buddy finn was down this this summer we introduced him to it because we just wanted to play something quick and he really liked it um you know the main complaint for good people is like if you get stuck with crappy factions i mean that sucks and you know if it does get run away with you're sitting there like you're really king making at that point you're deciding which of these two is going to win based on how you play whose way are you going to get into because you can't win so are you going to and let me tell you the answer to that is mine they're going to get into my <laughs> um but it's it, i mean it's really fun playing all the different combinations of um like and and you you learn your favorites based on your play style my buddy who loves engine building games like dominion and anything where you build like you set up a deck to get the engine or whatever. He loves wizards because his favorite thing is card draw. The more choices he has, that's his favorite thing. He plays blue and magic, the gathering. He's all about card draw. So he loves the wizards and, uh, and the other ones that work like that. He despises the minion heavy ones, the ones like dinosaurs, which have like three actions in their whole deck or robots. He doesn't like that because it doesn't give him many options. Mm -hmm. um, I prefer uh, ones that have I like, uh, oh, spies. I love spies because it screws with people. Spies is all about making other people <laughs> discard their good cards from their hand. Love so frustrating. It. I know, I know. So I love playing spies. It's like, oh, I'm sorry. If you have a minion in your hand, please discard it. Oh, I'm sorry, the master spy. If you play an action, <laughs> discard a card. <laughs> like, as y'all know, I am an agent of chaos. And so wherever I'm not competitive is, in the slightest. There's not no. a competitive no. bone in your body. No, it's all in good fun. Um, and like, no, it, it, no competitive at all. <laughs> it, wherever chaos can be sown, there will I be. And so I love, I love the spies. Which, oh, I like the steampunk a lot. Um, I like this just because I like the aesthetic and they have a lot of like, you know, item action type thing. Who else do I like to play? Um, I love robots, but that's just because they're really good. Um, My Little Pony is one of my favorites. I love the ponies. Um, that is such a sentence. Anyways. Look, I was a fan of My Little Pony from the freaking 80s. My Little Pony, the movie, was exceptional. Like, are you kidding? I could, I still know the smooth song from My Little Pony, the movie. <laughs> and I, so, I missed the part in my life where I was supposed to get into My Little Pony. I was into Blue's Clues. My that was little, fun. My Little Pony is exceptional. And for a modern day kids show, Friendship is Magic is also exceptional, considering that most of them are just random screaming. Um, I love Friendship is Magic. And John Delancey plays Discord in uh, like the second season. And he was Q in Star Trek. So I, I wanted know. to ask you a question, Alan. Yeah. So this is like, I've never actually played Smash Up because the one time I tried, it's You're not because I've been game. against it. It's just none of my friends had it. And the one time I tried to play it at a board game cafe, it was so well loved. It was like impossible to like learn from the broken rule book and figure out if you had all the components and gotcha. stuff. And I was just... The one time I tried, I was getting flashbacks to learning Seven Wonders at the cafe, and I'm like, nope. And gotcha. I just that makes sense. <laughs> never again. But, what's but um, what, it, what a lot of the chaos you were reminding me of, though, is have you played Small World? And if you, you said you were looking for a quick to set up game, Small I World. I used to have Small World. I don't know where it went. Um, it's like that's a really quick game, and it's all about like changing power combos and factions, and like yeah. you literally can't get attached to your situation. Yeah, yeah. Small world, small world is fun. And um, has dice or die. I don't remember yeah. this one. Hey, I, played that, I played that more in college, um, and I don't know what happened to it. It has a World of Warcraft one now. I, I saw know, that. Hammer one. Oh. Andrew. 
There are themed um, – so every every freaking um, expansion is a theme, and there are two that do not work, that change the game. They change mm. the, the way the game is played that I exclude them because it's not – so the first one that changed it was the freaking Cthulhu. It has a Mythos pack where there's four, like, Lovecraft factions. <laughs> the problem is, is that – one of the Lovecraft or two of the four Lovecraft factions add what are called madness cards to your deck. And at the end of the game, you lose a point for each madness card is in your deck. The problem with that is, is only other Lovecraft factions have the ability to remove madness. So mm -hmm. it becomes so unbalanced. If you're a Lovecraft deck and no one else has a Lovecraft deck, it's completely unbalanced because you can just win by being like, oh, minus one, enjoy, minus one, minus one. And so we don't play with that, which sucks. And then they had the Munchkin expansion. Munchkin, which is a hell on earth game just in general. Munchkin <laughs> is the most mean-spirited, unfun game on the face of the planet because it's just – it's literally just like – who do we hate today? Which game is going to end today? It's also all about gaslighting. That game is who can gaslight the best. Yeah. But I love the rat on the stick card. <laughs> I mean, Munchkin had its place in college when it was like the only game I could get people to play, but I did yes. get rid of my copy as soon yeah. as I could. I The only reason I still have my copy is because I happen to be in New York. Uh, like, I had the copy with me, and I was in New York, and the guy, Steve Jackson, was signing uh was signing uh he was in the comic shop that i came across mm -hmm. and so i'm like sign my munchkin and that's the only reason i have one and he drew oh and that's why i have oh no this is flux never mind in terms of games that don't make sense i have a signed edition of zombie flux nice. but that's also oh. like a game that like can overstay its welcome yeah. yes <laughs> but the munchkin smash up adds like it adds like to the bases it adds items to the game. So if you break a base that uh, has treasures, it's a munchkin base, you get your choice of like these powerful items that increase the power of your of your faction. And it just, it broke the game. Like it was, it, it just wasn't fun. The items are too powerful. And so we, we just weren't having fun with it. So I removed, I removed the munchkin um, from my thing too. So uh it's just it's weird like I, I appreciate them trying to innovate but when the mechanics break the actual base game mechanics it's just it just doesn't work so um but I love it, up. Man, it uh, just takes forever because people take forever to play their cards yes it reminds me of when we talked about legendary like that is another game that has so many expansions that come in and so many <clears throat> different new mechanics yeah and sometimes the new mechanics easily fold in and aren't too powerful and you don't have to balance what's available but like I got the, um, cause the game came out around the same time as guardians of the galaxy, which I was obsessed with. So I got the guardians of the galaxy expansion, which it's really hard to fight Thanos without any of the guardians characters. And like, yes, <laughs> cause you but need the, the, you need the, in, the stone. Do they have the infinity stones? Is that what you get with that? Yeah, or something? There's like a special ability that happens with the guardians characters that help combat some of the hardness of Thanos. Cause Thanos is so strong. Yeah. 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 And, just, oh, sorry, go ahead. Well, I was just saying like, that's just like, that's, I haven't played Smash It, but that's like a scenario awesome. where it's like you have this ever evolving game with new mechanics and it kind of does just naturally become a point where you can have complete chaos, but sometimes there's just too much chaos yeah. and you have to like. Well, I thought I wasn't going to have a natural segue this whole time, but a game that has a bunch of expansions that add new mechanics that all work really well together, Arkham Horror! <laughs> <laughs> They change the game, but they all work really well with the base game mechanics. And the base game characters are just as strong. They're strong enough to survive the, the you know, the, the newest expansion. It's good stuff. I don't know if the new one does, but mine does. I'm so happy I got to segue into that. I That's thought good. I was going to miss an opportunity to talk about Arkham. Alan, well, how many not that your name hasn't been Arkham the entire <laughs> yeah. video. There's probably like maybe two people watching it that notice that. But yeah. uh, <laughs> that's my subliminal messaging. How many people do you play Smash Up with, Alan? Uh, I usually play with four. Uh, we've played with as much as eight, but you're gonna play for you gonna play for three oh, hours. Yeah. Eight long, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's designed for four, but there's really no reason you can't play with more, except that it just makes it take a long time. So usually four. Yeah, I I most recently I played it with six, and it took probably too long for because yeah. a lot of people were learning. I had only played it one time, and my other friend was like just teaching us so. Yeah, definitely overstayed its welcome because people take forever. Oh, yeah. Turns. 
Andrew and I play it together a lot. I find it fun with just the two of us. What? Yeah. I was literally about to say, it is not fun with two players. I like it. I learned with two. Sometimes people run away with the game. So it's like... So you or, have to be equally that, matched people. Then. We also pick our Absolutely. own factions. So mm. we both pick ones that we feel like work well together and then it's like an epic battle we we started the only time i'd let people pick is my buddy matt decided that he was going to try to win with the worst factions so we would let him choose the factions that none of us wanted like ghosts and he had to play several games with the ghost before he finally won and we're like yes and then he played with plants because no one had ever won with plants and then he mm -hmm. finally won with plants and then I ended up randomly with Cyber Apes, which is arguably the worst faction in the entire game. Mm -hmm. Cyborg Apes suck booty. And I don't know how it happened. I lucked out and I did end up eking out a victory with the Cyber Apes. And now I never, I never, no one ever has to try to prove anything again with them because they're so bad. I hate them so much. I'm trying, to like what, what and, I'm trying to think of who Andrew is. I feel like he uses hero, superheroes in Greek gods maybe those or are, those are excellent superheroes are very good and i like the mythic heroes as well is it mythic heroes i like playing with the princesses and the ponies princess princess the princess faction is almost broken like <laughs> the only minions you have are recoverable five drops i know that have a power i'm sorry <laughs> pass get out <laughs> I hate it when someone draws princess. I freaking hate it when someone draws a princess because they're so <laughs> strong. Yeah, yeah, whoa. Was that <laughs> an F freaking? I don't think he said no. He said, okay. no, 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 okay. no, 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 He teaches too many like, students. What? He probably, he, there's no way he would slip into that. I haven't, I haven't, I have not, no. I hit it. My F-bomb days are, are, are behind. Yeah, because once you slip into it, you have to undo and it's, the transition's hard. Yeah, yeah, it's been a hot minute. I was like, oh my gosh, did I? And then I'm like, wait, no, of course I didn't. Like, no, I said, no, 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 you I, were was just, I was just like saying, oh, I was talking through it's my. It's just gruff. Mm -hmm. yes, a exactly. word that began with an F and ended with a. Mm. Exactly, exactly. I mean, it meant the same thing, which means you basically said it. No, but... false. No. I, <laughs> I also like, isn't there like a Sailor Moon one too? I like those. Yes, ones. the, um, what yeah. are they called? They're right here. Um, are they called Pretty Warriors or I don't remember. Uh, I'm gonna find them. Hold on. They're um, but yes, they are the Sailor Moon ones. Um, How many like those ones do you have? I have. Sounds like he likes the twenty of them. Yes. I have many. I have again. I had. I have all of them until I think I don't know when the last one was. Uh, the last one I collected was, but oh, I am yeah. missing several currently. Like there have been enough to where they had to release a new big box. A new yes, big we have box. that. We have the big giant box. Yeah, I have. I had to get the big box, the big geeky box, but now there's a mm -hmm. bigger geekier box. Mm -hmm. um, I do not ever play with the geek faction because it bothers me that it exists. Yeah. I'm not playing a Felicia Day card. I'm certainly not playing a Will Wheaton, Will Wheaton. five drop. <laughs> Get out of here, Will Wheaton. <laughs> like, guess what? Wesley Crusher's everyone's least favorite Star Trek character. That is true. Hate Will it Wheaton. Is true. Hate but him. he did tabletop, which was a really fun YouTube. Tabletop, we honestly, tabletop's very important. I never got to watch it when it was live, but I do know a lot of people who only learned about board games through that YouTube thing. And, and again, this is my hipster thing. It frustrates me, having been a board game aficionado my entire life, having people be like, oh, uh, do you see Will Wheaton? I'm like, I don't give a crap what Will Wheaton says. What is Will Wheaton's credentials for liking board games? Oh, the fact that he, that he was like his mom knew someone and got him on Star Trek, and so now he's a qualified to talk about board games? I don't care. Please stop talking about Will Wheaton. That's an actual conversation I've had to have in college, like many times. Like, I mean, stop. Like, I don't care about Will Wheaton. Stupid Will Wheaton. I'm Sheldon from. You are Sheldon. I was, yeah, I was about to say, you're having some. I mean, I have mediocre to mild opinions about I him, but Will you Wheaton. have some hatred. I hate Will Wheaton. Yeah, I am indifferent on Will Wheaton, but I do it's appreciate funny. that tabletop exists. I, yeah. I simultaneously hate it and appreciate it. It's yes. Just, uh, it, it makes it like accessible. To, correct. For, correct. I mean, that's like, how I am with a lot of very popular things in things that I love. Like, yeah. like I mean, a lot of popular fantasy. Like, there's very few actually super popular fantasy media IPs that actually I love, but I like that they're there so more people appreciate fantasy. Yeah. Same with sci-fi. Like, there there are just very few of them that I actually really love. I think Harry Potter was the only fantasy ip that came out while i was loving it also yeah. everything else i was like oh there's this show that's gonna be popular i should read the book so i can be a part of the conversation and i never loved it but it was still like my my inner 
populist is always at war with my inner aristocrat because like when I was seriously, I'm constantly, I'm, I'm torn between two worlds because when I was growing up, like in the eighties, none of this crap was popular and like none of it was popular. Like I, you had to sacrifice your popularity on the altar of having a good time. Like, and I don't, I didn't care, but like you catch flack and all this stuff. And now all of a sudden, all of a sudden, all this crap's mainstream and like you know you got dude bros being like dude grab your dice let's roll and it's just <laughs> Al, alan you should it's, it's nice that people can like things now no i the thing is i'm saying i'm at, i'm not saying that i'm elitist i'm at war with trying because i really do i i really am a revolutionary You're trying not to gate keep. i feel you i feel you but the problem is i have to fight the like being like no you shall stay back, you heathen rabble. You were not there during the dark days of law. And That's you know, literally how I feel every time someone disses Mistborn Era 2. I'm like, yeah. sorry, you were not there when Alloy of Law came out and when Brandon Sanderson was finishing the Wheel of Time. You were not there as a Sanderson fan who didn't have a Cosmere exactly. book for exactly. years. Exactly. We treasured that release. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, exa it's exactly that. So you have to fight against, like, I am glad that it's more accessible because you know what? There's more people to play with, even though I'm probably more elitist about who I play with. And like, I'm like, dude, I've got some dice. No, sorry. Um, it's but, not the average gamer anyway. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> and then, um, I, um, but yeah, I mean, and, and it, the good thing is we get more material. Like yes. things are funded more. Like we get more stuff. There's more D and D material than ever before, and it's because it's mainstream mostly now. When I was at I like my play, my second edition AD and D player's handbook. <laughs> what class can the elf be? You can only reach level fourteen in the cleric. <laughs> like you know, sitting in the sewer, hunting demons or whatever people thought I did when I was playing D and D. They thought whatever you were doing was the same thing that happens now in Stranger Things or something. No. <laughs> oh, no is that another thing you hate? No, no I just ha I haven't watched Stranger Things because it's popular. <laughs> you would think you would like it, especially think, based off your um, opinions on nostalgia. I also don't think I would like it. I like the 80s, but I don't think I would like it either, which is why I haven't watched it. I, I'm... I'm more discerning about my TV days because like, like Sarah was asking how I have time to play video games, I don't. And so the TV is the first thing that gets the ax if like there's no time uh, because of all the other things that I have to do. But I, I always wanna play board games after I talk to you guys. Like yeah. it, it, it does like re reinvigorate my love of board games of which I play far too few these days. I mean, it's hard because it's, I mean, it's more fulfilling because of the social aspect, but the social aspect is what makes it the harder thing to do consistently. Correct. Yeah. Versus yeah. just reading a book that's kind of, you do it on your own, then you talk to people, you know, like it's mm -hmm. different. Yeah. Well, this has been a blast guys. And we will, we're going to, I mean, we're going to keep doing these as long as we have. I have up. literally like 50 board games in my apartment. We've got. <laughs> but not Smash Up. That's so weird. It, it was one of those, it's, it's one of those beginner games, you know, like there's beginner fantasy and beginner sci-fi that like, mm -hmm. I just didn't play and no one I've met has asked to play it with me and taught yeah. it to me. Like I, I've never been against it but it hasn't come up. Yeah. We'll add this on the list of things to do when you come to Newfoundland. Yeah. I I'm, really want to go. I'm, a, go to Canada. I'm just a fan of asymmetrical gameplay where mm -hmm. like it can change depending. Like, I, again, I like randomness and I like chaos. That's why I feel like small world would be your thing. It's literally it, about con conquest and stretching yourself too thin and then failing. No, I agree. I, the problem is, is like when I was in college, I had too many friends who were like just really, I, I think you've talked about this the first one. They were just really good at strategizing and optimizing play in the Euro games. And so if you weren't like them, you couldn't hang and it wasn't fun. So, any game that doesn't have some element of randomness, the best the best player is going to win. And I understand that, and that's fine. But like when someone is consistently the best player, it's like, I mean, okay. Like we don't play Smash Brothers with our one friend anymore because he's so much better than us. It's not even fun. It's like, I mean, okay, making, how about we don't play and just say that you won? Okay, cool. Now we've saved our time. And so I really like games that, one, cooperative. We've talked about this because I'm not competitive and I don't like other people being competitive. And, uh, um, and then, um, it's all true. And then, uh, and then, um, you know, games that can introduce that at least sometimes the king can be toppled. And, you know, I, I always 
my revolutionary blood gets 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 like pumping when that happens. It's pumping. I, it's pumping. <laughs> I I'm like that usually. I'm the one in our friend group to win or right. like do a little bit better. Uh, so whenever I do like very badly, I never live it down, and that is like <laughs> part of why my friends enjoy it uh, because like one game of Viddy Culture like four like three or four years ago where I got ten points and you can get like to to trigger the end of the game you get twenty so I only got ten points that game and I will never live it down. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, then you the thing is you've given your friends like an amazing shared experience yes. of coupling the monarch. Exactly. Oh, that's, the, that's the best. Exactly. The best. So. I don't know. I, I, like, I, I feel that struggle. I think for me, I don't, I You're think that, that I'm playing for second place a lot of the time, which is fine. And then those rare moments when I do win, they're always annoying about it. Cause then they're like, oh, we need to recount the points. I'm like, okay. I still <laughs> Hold want on. My You're not points. the one that always wins? I'm allowed to win sometimes. Well, it depends on which group I'm playing with, but no. Really? Because I'm tactical, I'm not strategic. Strategic people win more than tactical people, unless you're playing a tactical board game, okay. and then I do better. For the layman, do you want to define those two very similar terms? Yeah. So strategic is well. This is what I, the board game community, has decided. This might not be based off war talk or anything yeah. like that. Um, strategic is more like chess. You're thinking the whole game ahead. You're from the first or second move. You have a whole game plan lined so up. Stressful. You, That's so stressful. Yeah. Tactical is very. You you think a couple moves ahead, and then you're allowed to pivot once you have new information. You're very reactionary, and you, you think in the moment. You think within a few, very short term. So I, that's I think approximately God. what I've learned on book. Which one are you? I'm tactical. So when a game uh, adds enough randomness, or not even randomness, but like there's enough variable change, yeah. even if you can predict it, that there has to be a pivot. I'm very good at pivot, but I'm not very good at like. I, I don't think we're going to talk about it, but like Gaia Project or Terra Mystica, I actually have Terra Mystica here, which I love that game, but I that's a spreadsheet game. That's a game that if you have an internal spreadsheet, you will win. Um, but... That is a very victory points game. That, oh, victory that's points. the victory points game. That is the most victory points game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna link. I'm gonna link that Pro ZD sketch down below. You should. Uh, it was fun. Our other, our other two videos. Uh, Andrew, guys, Andrew sent it to me like right after you did, and I was like, "Oh, Alan already sent it to me." He was like, "Oh, Alan already sent it." <laughs> sorry, sorry, Andrew. <laughs> uh, guys, this is always a blast. Us getting together and talking yeah. about it. This, this is so much fun. Um, Soon we have to try and coordinate the potential Arkham Horror dude, board like, game if, thing. If I can if I can arrange it where y'all can play freaking Arkham with me, I'm gonna be like I'm gonna be I'm gonna be tickled. Dude, crazy. in like two weekends, I have a little more free time. So yeah. your wedding, your wedding uh, things, <laughs> extravaganza, and, uh, wedding yeah. two out of threes this week. Oh man, madness. I mean, I'm um, excited, but yeah. And I always learn, like literally, I have played almost none of these games that you guys suggest. So I always I do like learning about new games, even if I. Uh, give them a hard time because I am the sower of chaos. Uh, I mean, yeah, I, and I know plenty of games you would like. So that are thematic, like Dinosaur Island. You literally make a park where dinosaurs eat people. That pleases me greatly. I've wanted to play that for a while. I want to play it now. <laughs> yeah. I, it's I literally Jurassic ago. Park, the board game, but they weren't allowed to call Why it that. Why do I not have that game? I'm adding that to my list right now. Anyway, <laughs> if you're not subscribed to all three of them, please subscribe to them, guys. These are all like... You know, clearly you come to BookTube to get board game content. So. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> so subscribe to all three of them. I don't care. This is this is like if you're not making the content you want to make, like what are we even doing, right? Yeah, you know, and make sure you link the other two videos because yeah, I, I think we will. reference them enough. Oh, 100 percent You will you should if you have not seen the first the first two, please watch them as well. Um I uh um talk heavily about some games and then Angela also talks heavily about some games and then Gregory likes Power Grid. <laughs> he didn't talk about it, Power Yeah, Grid. it was Energy Empire. <laughs> oh, it's not Power Grid? No. <laughs> How are they different? They're uh, different games. Like a, aren't you managing a power plant in both? Uh, no, you're, it, the Energy Empire is like expanded out. So you're managing a country that has many. Go, like, go watch Alan ignore us yeah, for the I last two videos. It, it has dice though, so. 
<laughs> oh, I approve of that then. We yeah. also give um, Alan a lot of psychological stress based off information we give him. Oh my <laughs> yes. gosh. Oh my gosh. They, like, guys, it's a lonely road loving American Ameritrash games that have dice in them. I don't wow. think we diss your games. <laughs> Gregory has a game that decides combat based on who's got more guys on it. Who does that? Auto kill? A lot what? of games do that. Like there's not. There's not That's the first one I've ever heard of doing that. I was like, what? You don't roll dice to the side. Not, there's not even cards. Like, Gregory, we should not tell him about the combat mode in Maracaibo because that will really crush his spirit. <laughs> why do Euro games that. have to have such names that I don't? That why do Euro games have names like Maracaibo instead They're of? They're just named Harbor? after cities. They wanted to probably name it like Havana or something, but there was probably already a board game called Havana. <laughs> like there's Puerto Rico. There's like why every is every Euro, Euro game named after a city? Because they can't think of new themes. All they can think of is trading grain. That's all they can do. They're too no busy one counting ever gives their me points. In Catan. No one ever gives me sheep. My dang workers are vegetarian. Unwillingly. <laughs> the sheep's meant for the wool, but okay. No sheep for no. you. My workers are lamb fans. Okay. Oh, another dice game, Space Base. That's a good one. You, that, save that for the next one. I, I gotta, I gotta add it to my list. Space base. <laughs> space base. Space base. All right. I've been <laughs> I'll trying type to. I've been trying to, I've been guys, to, I'm just trying to tag us out forever. Anyway, thank you guys for joining us and watching this video. Um, feel free to comment and tell me how wrong I am in the comments. Um, but because you know what, that just feeds my inner revolutionary, and I'll we'll settle it with dice. So, <laughs> bye, guys. <laughs> Victory points. <laughs>